Tell me, it's a new year, okay? Like, no. you're literally putting me on the spot. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, where is uh, our famous air horn? Hmm, well, oh. We need one. Oh, it's back. Yeah, nice one. There, there you go. That's for our guest, that's our special guest. That's for our guest. guest. Uh, we're so excited. I yeah, mean, man. she's credited with the birth of women football in South Africa and is seen as the face of women football in the country. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And late last year, she released, of course, a book detailing her football administration journey. And today she joins us in studio to basically take us down memory lane, Tommy. We are talking, of course, the one, the only, Fran Hilton Smith is in the building. First things first, compliments of the new season. Yep. And yeah, same to you. Same how has it been, how been for you? Well, it's been a bit rough. I had my knee re-replaced, so oh. I've been doing physio and trying to run around again. But otherwise, I'm very good. Thanks, and I hope you all had a good time and the listeners. No, um, we will we'll speedy and wish you a speedy recovery. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Did you get up to any junk eating as well, friend, or is no more junk eating for you? Lots of it. I've got <laughs> five kilograms somehow or the other with uh, Christmas, you know, it's always disastrous for the diet. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. What's your favorite meal on Christmas? Well, my favorite meal, of course, is turkey and... We had a big family lunch in the vineyard, so you always eat too much because it's just there and then you eat it. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man, we, we love that. But uh, I guess then let's let's talk about the book. We're actually uh, looking at it right now and you were showing us, friend, you know, your, your best picture as well in, in the book with uh, uh, Nelson Mandela, which I'm looking at it literally right now. Yeah, 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 there yeah, it is, yeah. Tommy. There you go. Talk there about go. memories. Then. I know, right? Yeah, like, absolutely man. incredible memories. That and when was to... that? Around which year, maybe? Well, it was around 96, and I was very uh... fortunate in my lifetime to have met uh, Nelson Mandela twice, mm-hmm. once with, of course, Banyana. Mm-hmm. Uh, as we were leaving for Nigeria, we spent an hour with him, and then again with my band, Beside the Woman of Jazz. We were invited to oh, yes. play at his house in Pretoria, so I've been really privileged to have met the great man twice in my lifetime. Uh, I want to know, well, while we're still on the book, has it always been something you wanted to do, you've always wanted to do, or in, 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 I think in your lifetime maybe, like, you know, at some point I want to write a book, or it's, some, it's an idea that came up later on in your life? Absolutely. I, uh, as my life progressed, I thought... I've experienced so much. I fought so hard. Uh, mm. Banyan have succeeded. I want to capture what I've been through for other women, for men, for any to read, mm. and hopefully that my book can be an inspiration mm. for uh, women, men, that you can achieve anything you want if you just put your mind to it. You, you just mm. can't give up. And I think the book illustrates that. In I've tried to squash as many things into my life as possible. I was a teacher for 20 years. I was a biker. I was a musician. I was a rower. I was... You name it, I've tried it. And and everybody must do that. Nothing is impossible. Live your dreams. Live your dreams. I like that. I like that because, you know, it's like uh, YOLO type of thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Don't box yourself. You can do anything that you want. Yeah. I mean, staying with the book, friend, um, a song for Banyana, and I'm seeing also, you know, quotes here from Mark Leeson that's saying, you know, that it's classic storytelling as it should be with humor and, and heart. Carol Shabalala, also this one, saying that it really, um, you deserve to be celebrated. Your journey deserves mm-hmm. to be celebrated, and which is really true. Talk to us how, um, you know, this came about, you know, this book to say, okay, um, it needs to come out last year. And I mean, we're fighting COVID-19 also, and you decided this is the perfect time for me to actually now do this book and release it. Yes, I think, uh, you know, I've been fortunate that in my life I did a lot of work for FIFA, Mm -hmm. the world body from 2001. I was working for FIFA, traveling. I haven't missed the Women's World Cup Mm -hmm. except 91, but the rest I've been there. And every time I'd be overseas, I'd say to my colleagues, you know, we have the best players in South Africa and 
They'd always say, ah, oh, this French is always talking about her players, but they never yeah. get to the World Cup. But it's once we got to the World Cup, which was in 2019, that also inspired me to put it down now, mm. that we finally got to the World Cup. Um, my point was proven because suddenly the whole world was snapping up our players. Yeah. And we have players now like Linda, Tembi, Janine, yes. uh, Rafael, we, Jermaine, all playing at the highest level in Europe. And I always knew that was possible. And now I'm writing to all my friends and saying, <laughs> I told you so. Oh, Buy my book, follow my players, they, they all over. But... On that note, uh, an important thing that I started 18 years ago mm -hmm. was the High Performance Centre in Pretoria. And that was something I realised in my travels overseas. We needed an academy yeah. so that the girls could come and be in one place, um, mm -hmm. have nutrition, have medical, yeah. have yeah. everything. And that's paid off big time because these key players, the Lindas, the Tembis, Janines, Mamelo, ugh, the list is endless, mm. all come through the ranks of the High Performance Centre. Mm. And even someone like St. Peewit Lutlu, who's the under-17 coach, she's yeah. a product, she has a sports science degree. Mm. Um, we have last, I think last year, 19 of my students qualified with university degrees. Mm. And it's all thanks to football. Mm. So now our parents who, before when I'd say, look, can I have your daughter to play football? They'd say to me, well, what's the point? Where yeah. is it yeah. going to get her? It's a waste of time. Mm. Now they can see you have someone like Tembi Khatlana last year. She built her parents a house in mm. Alex. Uh, she bought them a car, so now parents can, I can say, look look what women's football can do for your daughter. Mm. They've been to the World Cup, Olympics, whatever, so the whole ball game has changed. Mm. And how long did it take for you to, to write this, um, I told you so, you know, to, <laughs> to all your friends? How long did this take? Well, it took two years, actually. It sure. was a long story, and... I did it with my brother-in-law, there's Alan Whelan on the cover, because mm -hmm. he has written a number of books, and he's actually what's called, I'd never heard of it before, a ghost writer. So mm -hmm. he writes many people's stories. But I wrote it myself, but he just put it, you know, when I write, I get all worked up and I, I, I just write. So yeah. he, man, he tried to put it into some kind of order, but... Mm -hmm. It's, it's the adventures of my life with FIFA, with CAF. Um, I'm the only one who's ever served on the CAF Technical Committee, woman from any country in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, I've been there since 2013, so that was huge. It was there I fought for them to introduce the Women's Champions League, yeah. which uh, was finally implemented, also a dream come true for me, and even a bigger dream come true for a South African team to win it in mm -hmm. Mamelodi Sundowns. Yeah. And they'll be back again there next year. So um, I've really been fortunate to, to have achieved a lot of my dreams. Mm. Can we expect a movie? Of your adventures? No, <laughs> so really nice. I certainly hope so. I hope someone yeah. comes along and makes a movie. That yeah. would be great. But uh, the book, I think, covers 50 years of my life wow. uh, in all these different areas. I was mm -hmm. a karate instructor. I was a South African rowing champion. So I've tried to do everything I possibly could, and I want all women to do the same. What haven't you done? <laughs> That's a good well, question. Well, make money. <laughs> <laughs> make money. Really, Fran? <laughs> well, that never stops, eh? No, no, we, no. We never stop. No, it never stops. It can't stop. You need to always make yeah, money. <laughs> no. That's one thing. I never work for money. I can say that honestly. But, yeah. Uh, but also, um, I think in the book I've said it is... It, we went through tough times. It was not easy, especially in our travels in Africa. Mm. Um, often, you know, we were sent off. I was the manager for 10 years of Banyana, the national teams, and Safa didn't have much kind of uh, 
respect or whatever for mm. the team. So we were often sent off with no money, no credit cards, oh. no phones, oh. no nothing. And you had to just make do. And I remember always sitting in a bus in Nigeria for 18 people and we were 25. And the players, the staff would be looking at me with their big eyes like, where Fran help us? And yeah. I'd be thinking, my goodness, Lord help me, who's going to help us get I through think, all of this? You know, it wasn't easy, I, I can yeah. tell you that. Yeah, I think those are the stories we would want to hear. But, um, you know, because that was actually our next question. But before that, I mean, you were credited with, uh, of course, the brains behind Banyana Banyana, the formation of Banyana Banyana, of course. And, uh, you know, if you could share how that came about with us. Well, I think, uh, you know, Bafana, the name came about. And um, I was sitting one day with actually my late kit manager, Leta and Gigi. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, gosh, we've got to come up with some names here now for the women's teams. Mm -hmm. You can't just have this Bafana. Bafana. So with her and uh, my other man, uh, manager, Mary Jane, Sokela, and various people, we started throwing around names. And the Banyana Banyana came up. And I thought, well, that's great. It goes with Bafana. Mm -hmm. And then we came up with... Uh, Pasetsana and Bantuana for the under-17. Yes, so yes. we decided to just make them all linked together. And that's kind of how it came about, that the team was called Banyana Banyana. And that's why I called the book um, a song for Banyana, not just for the team, but for women. Mm. It's a song for women to, so to rise up and, and uh, express themselves and follow in my footsteps. I think um, I realized there weren't any women coaches. I had to fight my whole life to, to get on coaching courses. It was just not accepted. Yeah. And once I was the technical director at SAFA, I made it my point to enable other women, mm -hmm. especially former Banyana players, to do coaching courses. and. Mm -hmm. 27 of the women, mainly former Banyanas, have their CAF A license, mm, which mm. is the highest qualification in Africa. And we as South Africa have more qualified women coaches than the whole of Africa put together. Oh. Mm. So I've left a legacy there in administration too. I did FIFA courses for all the women from the region, and we have 87 women who've completed the FIFA course. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I've tried to empower women to carry on the legacy and uh, ensure that women can run women's football. Mm -hmm. And then, Fran, I'm interested. I mean, as I hear about your stories, right, I want to find out now back to a younger, like really younger you, how you got into football, like what made you fall in love, when was this, and did you see your journey, you know, getting to this far? Well, I never thought it would get this far to be on, you know, FIFA, CAF, recognized in the world, lost in 2019, I got the Steve Chuetti Lifetime Achievement Award. Mm -hmm. I never thought I'd get that many awards, but yeah. mm -hmm. when I was a youngster, my father played football, and it, uh, it just seemed that in the area where I grew up when I was seven, eight, nine, ten, most of the kids were boys. Mm -hmm. So they were all playing football. So mm -hmm. I thought, oh, well, I might as well join these guys. So I've got nothing to do. So, of course, yeah. they said, OK, you can come and play. You yeah. must be the goalkeeper. Oh. So I said, oh, OK, I'll be the goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> were, were you good? I was not as a goalkeeper. I wasn't much good. But then I slowly could push my way into the team and I was a very good left-footed, left wing, mm. very fast, very tall, so I slowly, that's how my football career started mm. and uh, continued and then I started playing provincial football for Eastern Transvaal mm. and Gauteng and I was, uh, for 10 years I played there. I uh, got in the national team, but of course we weren't able to play in FIFA competition yeah, like yeah, the men. Yeah, yeah. So that was disappointing, but um, so I continued. And then when my football career came to an end, I thought, well, there's no women coaches. Let me get into this field. But it yeah. was, as I said, very difficult. Mm 
Yeah. And then I got into administration, was the president of the South African Women Football Association. Mm -hmm. We then affiliated with SAFA, and I became the team manager. So I've been involved in all the aspects, really. That's absolutely incredible. It is. It is. I mean, uh, you, you mentioned you being a left winger and being fast, and uh, me and you, you relate. have something I can relate. <laughs> uh, something in common we share, at least. Uh, I can proudly say. Ah, but, okay. Um, I want. I want. <clears throat> sorry. I want to go back to the challenges as well. You mentioned the challenge you had to go through. You know, with Banyana and the bus, eighteen, and all of that. So I want to you to get us. You know, uh, to understand what were the challenges, maybe you know, as a, as a women's team as well, you know, especially in a male-dominated sport, mm -hmm. and some of the challenges you face. Well, there were many. There still are many, but... Uh, and that's not just in South Africa. It's Africa. It's the world. I've traveled mm -hmm. the world thanks to football, and I've seen in my travels that the problems are general, you know. Mm -hmm. But in South Africa specifically, I mean, when we first started with the national team, Way back in 92, 93, um, the manager then, Dora, they had two kits that were old Bafana kit um, that the girls had to wear. We had to tailor them, we had to mm -hmm. take them in. We wore the same kit for five years. Ah. She never lost a sock. Um, sure. We never had money. The girls never got paid. and. Not much has changed. We still don't get paid much. Yeah, the girls yeah. still need to. But it, that's, a, as I said, it's not just a South African problem. Mm. It's an African and a worldwide problem. Mm. Is women always paid less than the men. But mm. it's just the respect that women's football needs and also sponsorship. I've never understood why. Um, women's companies don't come and sponsor women's sports. I also want to ask, true. sorry to interject, you're touching a very mm -hmm. important point there about sponsorship and the willingness of sponsors to, you know, invest. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think, Fran, is, is, that is a problem, especially from other women, you know, in, in, in those positions, because we do have. Yeah. Why, what is the the problem with that? Why aren't they willing to do it or why are, are they reluctant? Well, I'm not sure. Maybe, you know, it's it's that they, they don't get much TV coverage, but now you have the Hollywood bets every weekend, the girls are on TV. Mm -hmm. um, you have, uh, I don't know, women buying all these products. Women are generally the shoppers. Mm -hmm. Maybe there isn't uh, enough people pushing them enough to get involved, you know. Maybe you need specific people at SAFA who just go and approach these women's companies, Lever Brothers, whatever, mm. stockings, hair shampoos, mm. to come mm. on board and sponsor women. Because mm. um, it's, uh, I think, Cecil, who are the biggest sponsors They've of women's been, yeah. football ev ever, mm. I think they've reaped the benefits of their sponsorship. They've really seen the success of Banyana, mm. winning Kasafa five times, Bukhari Cup, um, going to the Olympics, the World Cup. So they've got back a lot of interest. People support Cecil. Mm -hmm. And I think that should be an example to other companies that y you can reap the benefits from putting something into women and you empowering. You know, I always say if you empower a woman, you empower the whole family. Yes, yes, yes. And true. Um, that's why I wish we would have more sponsorship. But Women's football has always been the poor relation. We've always had to share boots and share tackies and share kit and share, share, share. Mm -hmm. So sure. it's something that still needs a lot of work. Mm -hmm. No, it definitely does. We are, of course, in studio with the amazing Fran Hilton Smith, and we'll continue with the great conversations. Let's see if Fran can still dance off air. <laughs> sports Radio. We are sport.